Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to the next episode of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors with Bob Cook and myself, Jackie Jones. So what we're going to be talking about in this episode is what is cure for the therapist or the client? You need to explain this title to me, Bob. Are, are you thinking when the therapist thinks cure has happened, is that the same as when the client thinks it? Or Well, Eric Byrne, the originator of transaction analysis, if it, he, 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 he died in 1917, 70, of a double heart attack, actually, he was the age of 60. Wow. On Mal Beach in California. If you'd have gone back in time, 70 years ago or so and asked him what's cure in the therapeutic process for you he would say and this is because he believed in contractual theory he would said when the clients achieve their contract i believe he would have said that okay and uh, i think i've read that somewhere as well that's certainly not true for me no by the way, uh, now in, what you're asking me in 2000, you know, where we are in 22, 2022, it, it, I see it very, very differently. And different trainings may have, and different therapists may have different views on what cure actually is. So, but for me, um, cure is an ongoing process. It's a, it's a process, not, a, not an event. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I'm 71. You know, I went to th- my own therapy when I was 34. No, I'm not on therapy all the way through uh, since then, but I've, I've had a lot of therapy. And, you know, I'm sure that I still will probably, you know, uh, uh, to the day I die, I think, have script issues or issues that may appear under stress, mm-hmm. which hasn't necessarily been revolve, resolved. And... Perhaps I live with that. I can function much, much better than I could before therapy. I'm able to stay in the here and now much better. My life's enhanced and I'm much, much happier. And occasionally I still find myself under stress and um, falling into places which perhaps I wished I could have got out quicker. Um, so it, it's an ongoing process cure. Somebody comes in and says, okay, I'd like to be, I'd like to be, I, I'd like to be free of depression. That won't happen in one session. It won't happen in six sessions, it won't happen in 10 sessions, it may never happen in 60 sessions. You might get to a stage where the depression has not been so intense. Yeah. Where you understand where the depression comes from, that you've got coping mechanisms which can handle the depression in a different way. And is that cure for people? It might well be. That might be uh, all they, they they actually need to enhance their life in a different way, where the depression is lot less intense, where they function in a different way, they can maintain relationships, and maybe that's cure. Yeah. Totally agree. Literally, those are the things that I, I wrote down here before, you know, coming on to record this. I put awareness, acceptance, ongoing learning, development, better coping strategies. Yeah, maybe that's cure. Yeah. You see, that's what I mean. What is cure really is in the person who uses the term. Yeah. You can read lots of academic articles of one of my mentors, Richard Erskine, who is the president of the International Integrative Psychotherapy, which I'm a clinician, accredited you know, clinician. Um, he wrote an article, I didn't have time to read it just before I came online here, on what it cure is. But so I'd have to go back and read it. But I'm sure he would have come to the same conclusion that the cure is a process. Yeah. Um, pardon me, Richard, if that's not what you said, but it's what I think anyway. Yeah, because clients come with one thing in mind and 
you know, life throws us a curveball. And that might be, you know, I've had clients that I, I saw for four weeks and were fine, but then something happened and then they'll come back for another few weeks and then disappear and then come back again. Or there's other ones that stay consistently, you know, but life happens. We, we think we've got it sorted and then something else happens. And that's for us as well mm. as therapists. It, it's, it's an ongoing process. Yeah, I th you see, I think for most people, if they can stay in the here and now, according to their own age, 71 or whatever it is, yeah. and they're able to uh, be able to uh, be sp have a sense of sponta sponta be spontaneous, they're able to have a more enhanced quality of life. For most people, that's not a bad place yeah. to be in. Yeah. Most of my clients will take that yeah and then where you are right about curveball is then some things may happen which trigger off things in your life which actually you haven't thought about for a long time and yeah. been probably compartmentalized in a part of your psyche and suddenly um you've regressed or gone to a younger place and um you're far from a position of being in here and now where you can utilize resources in a different way so one thing I have learned very solidly in therapy is that when somebody comes in to deal with one issue, as they start to deal with that, they often may go down the layers of the onion of the younger self. And many other things appear. Yeah. So, so it was right in one way. As you start to resolve the contract of what somebody's come in for, that, that small segment we might call is cure if you if we want to use that word however you usually have to recontract many 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 times again if you wanted to work in a ta way yeah uh, and contractual theory be at the top of the list but as we work down the layers of the onion we'll find many different levels of hurts and healing and as i say if a person can develop a new set of coping mechanisms i mean healthy ones which enable you to stay in the here and now and not regress, and able to, you know, access new healthy resources around you. So your life has uh, got a different quality of being. Is that cool? Yeah. Definitely. I, I, I was having a conversation with an ex-client probably a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, for, for me, I think one of the good things about therapy is when the client becomes aware of changes in themselves that are kind of like a warning that things aren't going that well. Yeah. But, but in order to have that awareness, we, we've really got to look at, mm. you know, our scripty stuff and, you know, what we step into and what we step out of. I know for me now, you know, what signs there are for me when my mental health isn't the best that's the first sign and I'm aware of it and you know you touched on it earlier on when you said you know we still fall into our scripty stuff but we don't stay there as long that could be seen as cure couldn't it? yeah yeah we you know I know my script hasn't gone away and I know I'm not 100% completely out of it all the time but I'm aware when I'm in it which to me is a good thing <laughs> it's a marvelous thing and nearly always people come with one thing they want to look at is all cure and in inverted commas and what they find is find is that that process they've come with will nearly always lead onto other processes under that process yeah if somebody comes with anger issues as you start to deal with the desensitization of the anger issues they then come may come to a place of hopelessness or they may come to a place of existential crisis, which they never knew was there because the anger was hiding it. Yeah. So as you deal with one issue, what may appear underneath, like dominoes, yes, other yeah. issues that the therapist then suddenly is finding themselves dealing with, which actually probably has more severe consequences than they thought of in the first place. And that's why the concept in TA of rackets is so important to think about. Yeah. In other words, 
what a person comes with isn't always what the therapist ends up dealing with. I'd say it's quite a high percentage of the time that it's not what we end up dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. Their defense systems. Yeah. Or their unhealthy coping mechanisms. Yeah. So many, many, many people can come with anxiety. Well, at one level, if we look at desensitizing the anxiety, putting in new behavioral programs, the person then starts to perhaps feel better because the anxiety has dropped or they're dealing with it in a different way. And then suddenly, six months later, they feel completely worthless, hopeless, and want to harm themselves. The anxiety, so it's like the anxiety, the depression, whatever it is, is simply the mask. Yeah. It's like a plaster. Yeah. If you just help somebody put a plaster over whatever the process is, at one level that may help for six months, but two things might happen. The plaster might fall off and then what's, then X happens or the person keeps picking at the plaster until yeah. the sore starts coming out underneath. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, for me, it is something that, that I do, you know, talk with clients about in the early parts of therapy is that, you know, things, things might seem worse before they get better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah, I don't like to give them, you know, a, a sense of false hope. It's like, you know, we might go down some paths where, you know, you don't intend on going, and you know, your anxiety or stress or overwhelm might actually get worse before it gets better. Absolutely, and then there's a the whole thing that Eric Byrne talks about with transferential cure. In other words, as you start uh, resolving the transferential issues then which we could sort of say is cure so you project onto somebody x and you, you you know then you've got the whole consequence of that as you start to resolve that um then something else happens and you get down the onion until you get to the authentic self yeah and then you're working with the existential issues and maybe that's cure yeah do have you ever I don't know whether it's a thing or not. Would you ever say to a client that they're cured? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Is there a I've point never, as a therapist? I've where... never said, no, I have never in 38 years said that sentence because okay. I don't believe in that sentence. I believe that people can make massive strides in enhancing their quality of life. They can make massive strides in understanding themselves. They can make massive strides in healing the trauma. I don't see that necessarily cure. I see, may see that as transform, transformational empowerment. I might see that as taking quite control of their life. I might see that in many other terminologies, but I've never used the word cure because I don't see cure in a one-off process. Yeah, as an event that happens. Um, I, th I think I was thinking more about my perception of the client's ability to be okay in the world sometimes isn't the same as theirs and whether there's a point where a client starts to use therapy as a crutch rather than going out and experiencing the world where they are now yeah the, yeah. the fear of letting go of therapy yeah. kind of keeps them in it if that makes sense and that's why i think berman when he talked about transferential cure he said the work, you see, when the client can, you know, the client may or may not leave therapy, but they have sort of internalized the therapist as, as the idolized person who helps them X, 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 and X. So they go, they may leave therapy with the, the therapist in their head. Yeah. And they leave, and God forbid, uh, Jackie, but they live, and there's no disrespect, they then live their life as Jackie Jones rather than themselves yeah now is that going to be better May, maybe if the person was a very unhealthy traumatized alcoholic or whatever and they've got you in their heads and they're able to you know move to a more self-caring position maybe maybe that's enough but in terms of real authentic cure that's another story 
Yeah. It's, it's about the, the client maybe trusting themselves to be okay. And yeah, no, that, that's a big one. If they've had two, three years in therapy with me or you or whoever the therapist is, you know, I think the therapist needs to deal with that whole process of what we're talking about here, which is getting to the real self rather than uh, what I think a lot of cancer therapists sort of do. And I'm not, this isn't a criticism particularly, is they, they may allow the, the client to leave thinking they're cured but actually they then end up you know with you or me in their heads rather than ever dealing with the authentic self yeah that's so easy to happen isn't it yeah oh definitely yeah and yeah it is it's it's i i'm wondering how how we kind of get to the end of therapy i know you know there's there's a process to it and the ending shouldn't be abrupt and and all this sort of thing but how do we know when it's the right time well for me i said it earlier on when they can stay in the here and here and now in a stable consistent manner yeah and they're able to um enhanced resources around them and able to have a sense of spontaneity, able to have a sense of freedom of action, able to uh, function in a way which is um, healthy for them. That's often not bad. Yeah. But then they have to say goodbye to the therapist on the way. Yeah. Now that might be the hardest thing of all, and unless they've done the work. Yeah. about loss and here and now loss because the therapist might represent the father never had or the mother never had or whatever, we were, whatever line, lines we want to go down. But I think a real trap, if you let the person leave, uh, still in a transferential process. I was once on a board many, many, many years ago in America, in California, and and we were evaluating therapists and there's four examiners and one of them had been in therapy with Eric Byrne. Wow. And you remember what I said, Eric Byrne died in 1970. So I was yeah. on the board about 1992 or whatever it was. So he'd been dead 22, 23, 24 years. Um, but she was still in transference with Eric Byrne. Clearly. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that was necessarily, I'm not necessarily being critical there because, you know, she might need, and I don't mean this in any negative way, but she might need Eric Byrne in her head to help her structure herself, to help herself in terms of, her, uh, you know, self care, to maybe she still needs that, but is that cure? That's another story, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I'm. I'm just thinking. You know, I I've had clients in the past that say, you know, after they've been with me, that they'll often say, "What would Jackie say?" Yeah, there we are. That's it. And yeah. that's not necessarily a bad thing, but is it indication that a person's never really dealt with their real self? Yeah. I don't know, but it's an interesting way of thinking about it. It is, yeah, yeah. And it's something I've never really thought yeah, about before. And maybe sometimes it's a bargain with the clients and the therapists that's, that's the best they can get to. Yeah. I believe they need to say goodbye to their therapist, but it's a, that's another process because then you are going to deal with the existential self. Yeah. And endings and goodbyes are, you know, can be quite traumatic in themselves for some people. For most people. Yeah. You take nine out of ten people off the street and talk about endings. Yeah. They will end in different ways. They often have great stories about losses, griefs, bereavements, endings, birth stories. We could go on. Yeah, yeah. 
and I suppose it depends, you know, what what the the client thinks about as far as cure and endings. You know, <laughs> it's one of them. I'll I'll put off the cure because I don't want the ending. I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. So when you're talking, this is you know, many people, one of their criticisms of, and I understand this, of long-term relational therapists or therapy, um, is over-dependency. Mm. I understand this because, you know, we, this is what we're talking about here in many ways. Now, I remember one of my mentors saying we'll change the word dependency to dependability consistency predictable yeah. things they need all the time and as they work through all these issues they'll be able to uh have a far more in independent and interdependent life yeah certainly i believe is true and I think there still is a lot of work to be done about to get to that position. And one of them is, is to say goodbye to the therapist. Yeah. Which may take a year in itself, by the way. Or six months. Yeah. So about one week. It, it, it is... It's it's a minefield, you know. Every every stage and every level, you know, the the coming into it. Sometimes I kind of think about it. I'm not sure whether it was said to me at some point that it, it's kind of like you know how we are when we give birth to a child. <laughs> There's a process to it. We need to prepare them for the outside world and give them all the skills and the knowledge that they need so that you know, when they turn 18 and they fly the nest, they've got everything that they need to survive in the world. And I, I kind of see therapy in a similar way. Yeah. Now, we, I run an, at our institute, low-cost clinics, and, um, you know, where people can have therapy, they haven't got that, you know, much money or economic yeah. hardships or students at a lower price so they can afford the therapy. Yeah. However, you know, the, the Institute maintains that bursaries and things like that. So it's 26 weeks. So they get six months. Now, I talk to a lot of these people who have had the 26 placements and they'll say how helpful it was. Because yeah. Through. But it and, you know, they go a long way with the purpose in those six months and I, I, I often very, very useful. But in most cases, it's not cure. No. In most cases, it's the beginning. Yeah. But it's helped them understand themselves more. It's helped them perhaps not fall into the pits so quickly. Yes. Help yeah. Them perhaps have more healthy, healthy coping mechanisms. And maybe later in life, they can take therapy up again. Yeah. So it's helped them, help them for that moment. But is Definitely. That cure, is that cure? Not from where I'm sitting, but it is a great help to some people. Yeah. And like you say, it's an introduction into the world of therapy. And, you know, when you were saying that, because I went through that process as part of the training, we, we oh, yes, work in the low cost client and everything. But there's something different about knowing that there's an ending to it from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it feels different. Yeah, there's a beginning, middle, and an end. Yeah. The problem often is, and it, 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 I'm just a problem, but it's, I, I do the assessments a lot and I make sure they know that. And still, you know, uh, you know, it's not an easy process as well. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we, you know, they carry on the journey in therapy with different therapists that cost, you know, a bit more money or that they end and come back at a later date, all these different things. Yeah. So, but we've helped their lives. And so Definitely. they may never be able to afford the therapy. Yeah. 50 or 60 pounds an hour. So it's an introduction. And we yeah. may help them have more healthy coping mechanisms, talk for the first time, be listened to by a considered, predictable, healthy other person for the first time. So... It, it, it's an introduction. It's yeah. a cure. Maybe from some aspects, some people might 
say that i don't think it is i think it's the beginning of a journey yeah but a useful one definitely yeah and and you know i would imagine that people get a, a great deal from it mm. particularly you know having been through that process as a, a trainee myself is you are really keen as a trainee <laughs> you know you you you're giving it 110 percent for every session that you you're doing it so they you know they get a good deal they do they do i mean they don't know anything else but they can have a good deal i think yeah yeah but cure i'm not so sure cure is a process not an event in my book yeah it's kind of like when, when you're saying that you know some people listening might think well what's the point in going to therapy if there's no cure at the end of it but I kind of relate it to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You oh, know, yeah. we start off at the bottom and we work up and then self-actualization is right at the top. I don't think we ever get to that because if we do, <laughs> then what else is there? Yeah, well, in, the, in TA, it would be script free, but I don't follow that either. No, well, knowing so when you're in it and when you're not to me is is good enough. Yeah, it's, it's good enough. Yeah, yeah. So, so that that top pinnacle of cure or self actualization or the perfect human being or whatever, I don't think there is such a thing, Bob. Apart from you, maybe you're pretty close. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly, not. I certainly agree with you. Uh, anybody who sets themselves sets themselves up to be perfect is always setting themselves up to fail. Yeah. So it's not fun being perfect, is it? It's a failing position. Yeah. So it's a script position. It doesn't exist. There's only one way to go, and that's down. Well, I think there's, you know, I just think a lot of the clients, again, who come from this whole families or society, which is doing, doing, doing perfection, and the whole thing, you know, we're talking about. And then, of course, they realise that just being with the client is so hard in itself. So they realise that's what I mean, setting themselves up to fail. So cure is a process. There's no doubt about it in no. my book. If I had to write an article today, that's the position I would come from. I know Oakburn talked about different levels of cure, transferential cure, social cure. I haven't gone into too much because, you know, I, I, I prefer talking in a different style in these podcasts. But you can go to academic articles. But in the end, even if there's different levels of cure, I still think they're processes. Yeah. I don't think they're events. No. I agree. So, Bob, thank you so much. I have no idea what we're doing on the next one. No, but did you say, or you perhaps you didn't say, that this podcast is the 50th? This is the 50th. I'm glad I remembered. You usually remind me. I do at the beginning. I, I, I had a milestone of 50. I thought, and the new today's was the 50th. So, I, I and you didn't say what. Well, interesting enough, you did not say at the beginning. Uh, this is the fifth, and I would say if we weren't over these podcasts, we would find out that usually you say this is the 47th, this is the 48th, this yeah. is the second. But it's so interesting that this podcast, you didn't put a number on it. I don't know what that's about, but I do know it is the 50th. Well, so, maybe it's a milestone. Huh? Maybe it's because it's a milestone and I didn't want to reach it. 50, 50 is a, a big, it's a milestone, Bob. Yeah. So I think we've done well, and I hope yeah. the listeners have enjoyed them as well. I think, for me, the milestone was 52, because then that's a full year that we've done it. Uh, so I think we've uh, still got two more to go, and then we celebrate. Well, on the 52nd, then, I will remind you, and if you don't say this is the 52nd podcast... I will say. <laughs> See, something else we need to think about, Bob, whether we yeah. should think about it in this podcast or not, is are we going to, once we go to 52 are we going to start season two and start from one again or are oh, we just going to keep no, going we're just going to carry on right all these seasons is an american process these are the decisions we need to make though bob <laughs> the multi-level they're all processes in the end i was just about to say it's a process we'll just keep going with it right until the next one bob thank you so yeah, much we're heading off to 52 Yes. Don't worry, I'm going to remind you. <laughs> Speak soon. Yeah, bye bye. 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 You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode. <laughs>